Uranosaurus. There were five French paleontological expeditions carried out in the Gedufawa region of the Sahara Desert in Niger between 1965 and 1972. There were two complete fossils found in the Ekar or El Raz formation, Agadez, in Niger in 1965. However, more specimens have been found in other locations in Africa. French paleontologist Philippe Taquet, who led the expeditions, named the species in 1976. The name meaning is Brave Monitor Lizard and has two meanings. It is made up from an Arabic word, Urane, which stands for valor, courage, or recklessness, or the Tuareg name describing the desert monitor. The specific name, Nigeriensis, was given to honor the country where it was first found. The specimens were transported to the Museum of Natural History in Paris. Classification of animals, especially extinct ones, always cause some problems, especially Uranosaurus, whose skeleton had many similarities to Iguanodon, such as a thumb spike. Hence the dinosaur was initially classed as an Iguanodontid dinosaur. However, further studies of Uranosaurus fossils have revealed that it also had significant differences and it was reclassified as a form of basal hadrosaur. Therefore, this ornithopod dinosaur is no longer placed in the Iguanodontite group, but instead is located in the clade Hadrosauridae, which includes the two hadrosaurs, the duck-billed dinosaurs. It is thought that Uranosaurus lived in the early Cretaceous period of the late Aptian stage, about 115 to 110 million years ago. Its body was long and measured about 7 to 8 meters, or 24 to 26 feet, with weight reaching about 4 tons. Uranosaurus had the hands of the more famous Iguanodon. In particular, the forelimbs resembled to look. Although they were roughly just over half the length of the hind limbs, and proportionately shorter than those of Iguanodon. The wrist was large, and its bones fused together to prevent its dislocation. The hands of the forelimbs had five short digits. It had a thumb claw on each hand, like Iguanodon, but the conical spike was much smaller. The outer finger was reduced and underdeveloped. The three central digits were the most robust, and their anatomy supported the weight of Uranosaurus when it was standing or walking on their four limbs. They had hoof-like nails that Uranosaurus probably used when it went on all fours to graze low-lying plants. The last fifth digit was not as flexible as Iguanodon's. The lack of the fifth digit flexibility is put down to the absence of tall growing vegetation around the area the Uranosaurus lived and therefore, it had no need to pull plants down closer to its mouth. However, it could still be used for picking food like leaves and twigs, or for lowering branches to a convenient height. Having shorter limbs would have reduced the distance between its mouth and the food it was eating. The hind limbs were large and solid like pillars, probably to accommodate the weight of the body. Each foot bore three digits. The femur was longer than the tibia. The speed at which Uranosaurus could walk or run is not known, but the whole posture suggests that it wasn't a fast sprinter. Uranosaurus's skull looked more like a hadrosaurid. Its skull is about 67 centimeters or 2.2 feet long. The beak was broad and flat and probably would have been covered with keratin. It was also toothless at the front of the mouth and looked like ducks or a platypus. However, large batteries of teeth were growing about two-fifths back from the beak. They were arranged in rows and the broken or weak were replaced regularly. As the jaws did not present strong muscle attachments, 
it was suggested that Oranosaurus had a very weak bite force, and it would have been more difficult for Oranosaurus to eat tougher parts of plants, such as roots. The dinosaur would have had more predisposition to eat softer vegetation and use the beak for pulling up the soft plants and leaves that grew close to the water areas. And as it was broad, it would probably help them to eat a bulk of it at once. At the extreme front of the jaws was a predentary bone. Its function was to cut plant material. Although the neck was short, it was flexible. The snout was longer than that of its close relative, Iguanodon. Unusual bumps have been found from the nasal opening to the top of the skull. Uranosaurus is believed to have lived in areas with low growing vegetation, known for the abundance of rapidly growing reeds and plants. There are two bony growths on each side of the skull, between the nasal and eye openings. It was possibly used as a display, or to better recognize each other at close range. However, the most obvious and spectacular feature of Oranosaurus is the presence of the huge array of neural spines jutting up and forming a picket fence along the dorsal, sacral, and caudal vertebra. These thick and long spikes supported a sail that spanned its entire back and tail, like in Spinosaurus. The spines were covered with skin. It is possible that the sail may have had blood vessels going through it. The spines were also bound together by tendons, which stiffened the back. Uranosaurus spines became thicker distally. All these described features indicate that the dinosaur may have had a hump similar to that of a bison or camel, rather than a sail. A big question arises, what was it there for? There are a few hypotheses. Some scientists think that it could have been used as food storage and was utilized by Uranosaurus as a source of nutrition mainly used in harsh conditions. Another option is that the sail was used for thermoregulation. It could have given the ability to control its body temperature, to cool down in the heat of the day in the hot African environment, or warm up in the wind or after colder nights. The cooling happened when the dinosaur dispersed extra heat by turning the sail away from the sun. To collect the heat early in the morning, Oranosaurus turned the sail toward the sun. There could be more reasons for having the sail. For example, it may also have been used for mating displays to stand out from the crowd and attract a mate. The sail could also play a role in confronting their own species in a rivalry or to scare off predators. Suchomimus and Spinosaurus also developed neural spines, probably due to an adaption to especially arid environments. It is believed that Uranosaurus had natural predators. Especially smaller juveniles may have been hunted down by Suchomimus, just like Iguanodon's juvenile was stalked by Baryonyx in England. Spinosaurids lived in or visited Greenery River Deltas, which was Uranosaurus's main habitat. Predators may have scavenged on Uranosaurus's carcasses. This dinosaur could be fed upon by Cacarodontosaurus or giant crocodiles like Sarcosuchus. Water levels probably change during the seasons. It is likely that Duranosaurus moved to other areas of fresh growth, but there could be another reason for the dinosaur to travel to drier stretches further inland, to lay eggs. Building nests in less flooded areas would help in preserving the eggs and caring for the newly hatched juveniles. These videos take a very long time to create. If you would like to support the channel and assist in improving it, then do please subscribe and give us a like, and consider joining our Patreon. Links in the description.